Hello and welcome. My name is Tor Blustad and I'm the game director for Hitman Absolution. Hi everyone, I'm Katja Nivadam and I'm the gameplay director on Hitman Absolution. We are very excited and proud to finally share with our longtime fans and everybody else out there what we've been working on very passionately for quite some time now. Indeed, I mean, Agent 47 literally was the start uh, for IO Interactive and it's by far our largest undertaking to date, building Hitman Absolution. Yeah, so during the next minutes, we'll talk you through a portion of the game that takes place in a dark and rainy Chicago, and we catch up with Agent 47 on a quite different type of journey to previous Hitman games. There's a citywide manhunt for him, and he's been tracked down to this derelict library. Mm -hmm. We're showing uh, part of a level which is called uh, Run for Your Life, and it sees Hitman uh, pitted against the Chicago PD. They're uh, hunting him for a reason we cannot get into, but uh, he will have to deal with that situation. <laughs> Glacier 2 allowed us to build a render also from scratch to uh, fit with the art direction of, uh, of Absolution, which is a more kind of a dense style. Uh, what we see in uh, in this playthrough is uh, kind of a, a noir uh, part of the game, which is following the story. The story and uh, and the art direction is is quite closely linked, mm -hmm. so that as as 47 kind of uh, goes through his journey throughout the game, the the style of the game and the whole look will change with him. This is a derelict library, right? It's early in the game, and and Hitman is seeing some hard times, and later as he. Uh, he hopefully succeeds, it, the environments will change to reflect that, right? Yes, and also, I mean, this is this uh, part of the game is called Run For Your Life, so this is where there is a, there's a manhunt, it's, uh, he's been compromised, he's uh, on the run, and he starts empty-handed, so it's, it's perfect for us to show off our mechanics in a natural way, where we mm -hmm. kind of build up the character throughout this playthrough. And, uh, yeah. and as you can see here coming up, is, is one of the new features we introduced in Absolution, which is Instinct. Yeah. As you've seen, 1847 can, can sense his enemies through walls and he can see or try to predict the path they're going to take. And this feature is, is uh, something that allows for, for actually looking at what the AI is doing in the 3D world instead of other places and trying to figure out what to do. But also it was, it was also a feature that got added when the AI got so complex and hard to handle for, for us and uh, the team. We needed some tools for ourselves to actually <laughs> make sure that we could play the game. So we're thinking, how, how could we make it easier for the player to avoid this kind of trial and error where you just kind of stumbled onto an AI and they kind of uh, just uh, came down on you? Instinct is, a, is also an economy, right? So it, it fuels a lot of the abilities that Agent 47 has to, uh, at its disposal. And this also means that, you know, uh, how much you use it will also depend on what difficulty you're playing the game. On, on the easier difficulties, it will be quite abundant. But on the harder difficulties, you have to really uh, uh, make some choices about what you want to do. Do I want to check for enemies? Do I want to uh, use my disguise powers? Or what do I want to do? You can't find them if the light... Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. We can see Agent 47 is uh, messing around with uh, poor Fisano. I think uh, when this trailer went live, we got a lot of feedback on uh, on the Fisano character, right? You know, <laughs> just uh, that the Sarge is, you know, giving a hard time and why did we kill him and, and all that stuff. And obviously, we wanted to show just how much you can actually invest in a, in a, emotionally in a simple uh, police officer. And uh, by choosing to kill him in the end, you actually, uh, you kind of feel how much you're actually attached to this guy for, for even, even if it's only for minutes, right? And obviously you are free not to kill him. It's, uh, it's perfectly f uh, up to the player, completely up to the player, what he wants to do. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean we are kind of showing off uh, one kind of version of, of a hitman in, uh, in our playthrough, but it's all up to the player when they eventually get their hands on this by themselves to, to choose which kind of hitman they want to be here and how they want to play out. If they want to kill the Sarge because they think he's an asshole, that's perfectly fine. It might be a little difficult to get to him because he's kind of surrounded by cops, but it, uh, it is possible and uh, if you want a little kind of poetic justice <laughs> in your playthrough. Oh, knowing our players, I think quite a few will. <laughs> I mean, that's also part of the replayability, that you can always go back uh, to an area and that's, there's tons of different stuff to, uh, to explore. Uh, you read? Uh, no, I can't say I do. Good. Waste of time. I also think it's interesting, right, that you have on one hand, you have this kind of calm and collected hitman, uh, or Agent 47, that will 
chooses battles and foreseeably avoid as much as possible being quite emotionless. But on the other hand, you have the player who really wants to invest himself in the world, right? Killing the Sarge is not super professional, but it uh, feels Check damn good. So, uh, so what do we want to choose? We've been spending a lot of time with our AI trying to build the kind of the most, it's the most complex AI we've built to date. And we have what we call an intelligence spectrum uh, that allows the AI a far more nuanced behavior than ever before. Uh, while in the old games, it was very kind of binary or kind of black and white right that uh, you went into a situation and if the, the, either they knew you or they didn't, if they, if they found you out, they will, every AI in the, in the world, every NPC would just come down on you and try yeah. to kill you. Yeah, I mean, in, in, in this playthrough, if, if the police haven't seen you killing anyone and they actually discover you, their first notion is not to start shooting, it's actually to try to arrest you. And based on the arrest situation, you can actually come out of it quite, in quite a few, few different ways, uh, where only a few of them actually lead to combat. You can still evade them and all that stuff. So it's, it's much more grayscale and it's a part of building this living and breathing world we really wanted, right? Where the environment is, is fairly rich and the, uh, the character interaction is rich. So you kind of, yeah, you get a feeling that this could be a real place. That's one deep hole. Hey, you think you'd survive that drop? Improvised weapons, as you'll see with this, uh, uh, here we have a bust. Just say um, <clears throat> we, we call improvised weapons like a number of, of props that, uh, that 47 can use. <laughs> The improvised weapons have, have obviously some gameplay relevance in the sense that they do some quick and clean kills, but uh, it's also a, a, a choice of style, basically, as also we see later in the, in the, in the hippie apartment. It often has this uh, dark humor twist to it, uh, which items you choose and how do you want to apply them to the AI, if you can talk about like that. <laughs> We just saw Agent 47 uh, scan the area with his uh, instinct, and uh, it actually also allowed him to see some of the environment uh, objects that he can interact with. So it's also, uh, besides from showing you what the AI is doing, it can also help give you some hints as to, is there a ledge I can climb, or is there an, is there an object I can interact with? Ah, Sergeant Meyer. See, you still can't sniff a fart out of your own ass. So the Sorgan Ash boys are coming in for the briefing. <laughs> Yeah, we needed a lot of cops in this library, and it was uh, we needed to kind of pour more and more in <laughs> as as the player goes through, so the stakes gets higher uh, towards the exit here with the red light uh, in the far distance. That's also part of the how the AI will handle uh, combat. If you choose that path, it can actually spawn in uh, better and better equipped uh, enemies to uh, confront you. Oh, yeah. So you should be careful about what <laughs> what path you take. Yeah, I mean, if you start a big fight in here, uh, you will risk that uh, that SWATs are kind of uh, spawned into this uh, area as well, which will make it uh, quite a lot difficult. Come on, fucker, work! Come so here we finally got our hands on a gun, and uh, we really wanted to show off a little bit of, uh, of combat. Uh, but this is just one way of kind of uh, ending this uh, this part of the level. Sure, you pussy, then. What's not maybe super apparent here is that this is just one path, right? You can actually, uh, you can take other paths and you can also, but just from this point, actually both do stealth and action, right? But as we also mentioned, <laughs> we really wanted to uh, to emphasize the Fisano story and in this case that means an unhappy ending for him. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, it's also good for drama. <laughs> not so good for him though, no. And as you can see, hopefully that the, I mean, the whole, action part of absolution shooting weapons and, and all that stuff is is something we gave uh, an upgrade a literal upgrade from the previous games right we have a cover system aiming and shooting feels snappy and responsive so uh, so that part is not it doesn't feel like the game abandons you it more feels like it's a natural uh, part of the game and again you're free to duck in and out of combat as you choose yeah i mean if you retreat from combat then they will eventually stand down and uh, maybe not into uh, talking about uh, their daily lives anymore, but uh, at least into something more uh, forgiving. <laughs> We're nearing a moment which I always uh, find very nice, the, the reveal of the, the Chicago, right? Because the skyline. 
speaking of Glacier 2, I always, you know, it, I really love the way the rain trickles down his head. It's really, you know, the skin shade and the reflections there are pretty nice. Yeah, they have uh, been spending a lot of time on that. Since we don't have hair on our main character, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's all about what kind of environmental effects oh, yeah. we can make on him and his suit. So running from police, this is part of obviously the run for your life level. Um, AG47 is hunted by police and this is something we really wanted to show. Allow ourselves sometimes to just set the stage a little bit. Um, and this is obviously uh, a more tight linear sequence. But again, with, uh, we're talking about NPCs and kind of uh, characters of the game and we really wanted a, a helicopter that was kind of like a personal uh, helicopter. Like it, it was hum mm -hmm. humanized and not just yeah. like a hunk of metal with a, with a huge gun. And also this uh, pigeon uh, coop is good for showing off some uh, destructible props and, uh, <laughs> and other things. <laughs> destructible pigeons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was something that came from the team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really didn't see that coming. But uh, in the end, it was a discussion of how many pigeons would be killed, uh, if it was four or two or, <laughs> <Yeah>. or six. <laughs> Another feature that makes a return in Absolution is obviously this, the disguise gameplay, and it's always been central to the franchise. This uh, ability of Agent 47 to um, to impersonate uh, the people around him, right? Take that uh, their clothes as disguise. But it's something also. I mean, we we never really got the time to to explore what this mechanic really could do, I and mean, we always wanted to do more with the with the disguises in the old games, but we never kind of found the time or the, had the people to do it. I really wanted this feeling of, of hiding in plain sight. That's been the theme throughout the, the talk of what, what do you do in the disguise. As we can see later, that's, that's coming up. But also just the feeling of actually walking around where people don't really know who you are. It's quite powerful. It's an experience that, that is uh, very close to, uh, to the Hitman games. And as we can see, uh, Hitman is slowly approaching um, the, the hippie apartment. <laughs> and I think that's very interesting in terms, terms of, of how do we build a new AI, what, is it, what, what do we mean when we talk about doing new stuff. And in this case, it introduces the concept of a trespassing zone. So the apartment here is actually a zone, and most people are actually allowed in there. The, the hippies are kind of uh, very friendly. But if there's one thing they really don't like, it's, uh, it's obviously cops, as it <laughs> says on the poster. So, uh, so coming here disguised as a police officer is maybe not the best idea, and that, that's why also... 1847 will have to duck and weave a little bit in here. We're so busted, man! Oh, fucking pigs! Bro, dude, calm down. Maybe they just want to chill. You know? They don't want to chill. This is also, I mean, this is from a, like, from a topical point of view, we really wanted uh, a lot of diversity in the game and also being mm. able to mix it up. So we have this very serious playthrough so far and then adding this kind of very. Uh, Ridiculous setting of the of the hippies, uh, kind of flushing uh, pot out the toilet. Come on, flush you piece of shit! It's a big part of Absolution is kind of trying for us to fit together the most kind of unexpected things for the player. So as they walk through the game, they never really know what's around the next corner, and they always would kind of want to play just to see what the hell is up next. Right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, here's one another one of these improvised weapons, the the bong, <laughs> one of my favorites. <laughs> Yeah, and you see. Yeah, they go. If you notice the the we have a small uh, challenge also going off there, killing uh, someone with a bong. And throughout the game, there are a multitude of uh, different challenges you can try to pursue as a player. And this is also tied into all the different weapons, the improvised weapons, and others that uh, the way you use them is also tied into all these challenges. So here coming up is, is actually the use of the instinct power while wearing a disguise. So this will allow Agent 47 to fool uh, enemy AI for a brief period while uh, burning off instinct. And uh, yeah, one of the new things you can do in Absolution. Eh, probably got called down. You going down? Wow. So characters is in general very important for us to have kind of pretty unique and, mm. and interesting characters for the players to uh, to meet throughout the game. This guy is actually uh, he's living here in Copenhagen. He's called uh, Ulla, I think. <laughs> He's a, a musician, and we we have we face scanned uh, uh, I don't know how many hundred people uh, for the game in general, and kind of mixed and matched them up. No, we have 
have done in the courts, no eyewitnesses from anybody. Yeah. Oh, for the ending of this playthrough, we really wanted uh, kind of an, uh, a big ending, uh, and uh, we made this lobby area that really it kind of cries out for a, for a big shootout. But instead of doing that, we kind of wanted to show off uh, another one of the of the disguise mechanics, which we call uh, hiding in plain sight. Which in this, uh, in the case of the police officers, it's using these kind of donuts that are kind of placed around mm -hmm. the level. Mm -hmm. I mean, and uh, throughout the game, you'll you'll have to learn or figure out which disguise fits with uh, which yeah. in environment interactions, and this is yeah, a good example of it. Also, just saying that it's still uh, very much a stealth or outsmarting game, so uh, most people will not choose necessarily to shoot people uh, as their first choice. But I mean, for those that really want a big fight, I mean, they can always just bring out some guns and oh, yeah. and, uh, and Definitely. try. <laughs> We're coming to the end, which also yeah. features another very, very big thing for us, which has always been a part of, uh, of the Hitman games as well, which is the crowd system. And it's safe to say that this time around it's also uh, seen quite a development, something uh, you can look forward to. Yeah, this is just a little tease. Yeah, definitely. So, but thanks a lot for watching and taking yeah. these uh, 17 minutes with yeah, us. And thank you for all your good comments and all the nice feedback we've been getting so far. 